Andrews. Who's from New York? One, one, two. Who's, who's pulling for the Lakers? Didn't get you. Uh, I'm not, I, I feel terrible that uh, we'll get this out of the way so we can get on with uh, the show. Um, um, I hate that the Kings have been favored in this, this match because it just works against you when they expect you to win. <sighs> Excuse me. It just makes me emotional. So, I, I'm glad they won the first game, but uh, it's not over yet. Well, obviously it's not over yet, it just started. Do most of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Yeah. I got a few down, a few hockey fans down here. All right, okay. Phoenix. They look good this year. Um, what, what, they, what was I going to ask? Um, I don't think I was going to ask anything. Do you, you guys want to ask anything? <laughs> Um, I just want to say, I've never been to the Phoenix Comic Con before, and um, so far, I have one question. How do you stand the heat? Please! Oh, it's a dry heat. Yeah, try this. It's, um, it's... Phoenix is wonderful, like that. <laughs> but I'll bet you half of you aren't from Phoenix. Out of towners? Phoenix? All right, and I'll alter that ratio later in my second speech. But um, uh, I, is there some format you guys can yeah, use? Yeah, if you would like to ask Mr. Anderson a question, we do have two microphones set up, one right here, one right here. We have these lovely line moderators in front of you. Uh, if you would like to go ahead and start lining up, we'll get underway. Do they have to be that close? <laughs> I mean, look how far back those people are. <laughs> Might be harder to hear them back there. They're on a microphone! <laughs> Anyone having trouble hearing me back there? The real question is, do they have to be this cute? Are you going to take that from her? <laughs> Hi. Okay. My, my question is, do you remember the Stargate episode when you and Christopher were trapped in the time dilation? Time loop? What was it called? Do you remember? Um, window of Opportunity. <laughs> Did you make up all those really hilarious parts? Did I what? Did you and Tilk make up all those really funny parts? Well, I made mine up. <laughs> and most of his, to be honest. Now, we had fun doing things like that, and um, the whole concept of the show, I mean, it was very well written, I have to say, that the the uh, producers and writers and uh, the script writers were really good at their job and what they did, but I grew up, when we first met, I had sort of had to warn everybody that, first of all, I had to warn MGM that I, was, I couldn't take the job unless they would trust me and let me, because I was at a point in my career, and that's a boring story, you just want an answer to your question. <laughs> so, yes, I made up. <laughs> One of the, uh, hell, I can't remember which season it is, but they have a gag reel where uh, Carter, and it's the scene where you guys find the uh, Stargate in, in Antarctica and you're trapped in the, in the glacier, and she pulls the MacGyver prank on you. <laughs> I'm trapped in a glacier with MacGyver! Was that a gag reel? It's not a gag reel. I thought it was an episode. <laughs> I swear. What was going through your head when she's first, I mean, the scene was, you know, she was trying to do a serious scene and all of a sudden it changed on you. What, what kind of went through your head when it went south? Well, my first impulse was to yell, cut. <laughs> because 
I was one of the producers, and time is money. But I'd much rather have fun than save money. So it was fine. Smatter. That's the definition of smattering. Um, no, I. She was. I thought it was very clever. I just, you know, didn't expect it in a dress rehearsal like that. But uh, I think the notion was. I, for, at, at first, I, I thought, well, she's forgotten her lines, <laughs> and she's off book now. And oh my God, she's talking about MacGyver. <laughs> so I had to like turn around to the camera and get a little smirk. Like I was in the know. <laughs> but they got me. It was the epitome of cute. You all know how much I love cute. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to say that I really love you in... Um, Closer. Closer. I just want to say I really loved you in Stargate as Colonel O'Neill. And um, I had one question. What was the best prank that was played on the set of Stargate? Oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? It, I don't know if anyone really formally pranked anybody. All my shenanigans were off, you know, they were improvised or came in a split second of non-thought. <laughs> But I do, I can, I don't know how many, is there, are there a lot of children here that, <laughs> can I tell a story about gas? <laughs> is there any mother saying, no, don't you dare. He's going to talk about farting. <laughs> um, it, uh, yeah, Chris Judge and I had a, uh, a penchant for being rather gaseous. So, um, it's not so much a prank, but um, he and I were doing this, and it, this stories are legendary, I won't even go into them, but you can imagine two guys that took pride in, I mean, he, he should write a book. Because he, he would um, purposely, like, line up the elements at lunch of things that would combine to create the greatest explosion. I swear it's true. But um, I knew that because I don't, and any set that I ever had been on, I would be the, I was always the champion because I, I just, I had the kind of audacity and I just, my thought is it's a natural physiological process of the body. Why hold it in and cause problems? So, anyway, Chris and I had this, uh, we got to know each other, and of course, then it became a contest. Um, of, I mean, hands down, out of the gate, he won the, uh, uh, the fragrance part of the contest. But I would win the auditory element of it, and could play tunes off my... kids. But anyway, I'll, I'll get done with this. We, uh, it was obvious, it became obvious to me that here was a young whippersnapper, an up-and-comer, and he was going to be great competition for me throughout life, so I sort of had acquiesced to some degree. We had a scene where um, I'm in an elevator, and he makes an entrance into the elevator. So that's the setup. And it was a scene after lunch, and I was lucky that day. <laughs> Broccoli and something else. <laughs> but I was able to, on the second take, we had to do two takes, because I think in part because I, you know, I couldn't make it work right on cue. So, um, so take two, and I, it all comes out. It just, I mean, my shirt was flying. <laughs> I was getting light, but it just, I don't know if you remember anybody watched the show to see, notice how small those cubicles are, but you know, every corner of it was filled with me. 
So it's action, doors open, Chris comes in, takes his place, doors shut, we're locked in there. And he, his, his reaction was, oh my god. And it was over. I won the day, but I handed him the crown soon afterwards. Teach you to ask those questions. <laughs> Maybe not. Hello, thank you for braving the heat to be with us. Uh, my question is what's your favorite memory of working with Michael Shanks? I just saw him in Germany about a week ago. He's, uh, Michael and I uh, really got to uh, like each other a lot. And in great part, later on in the series, where his, um, our characters couldn't have been further apart um, in mentality and priority, etc. But he, uh, you know, I don't have any, like, cute little quips or anything like that. I just, I have to say that um, Michael and Amanda were the two actors that I loved working with all the time. There's no aspersion on Chris, he just didn't have anything to say. You know? <laughs> but Michael and Amanda both are wonderful actors, and they can talk fast. And it facilitated my character choice, mind you, it was a choice, to uh, maybe not talk so fast and actually just respond with a simple, what? <laughs> And it worked for all of us, but uh, I don't know, it just it adore the guy. He's, um, you know, he can be a real dink around hockey season, but uh, <laughs> see how I cleaned it up, Mom? Um, but, uh, you know, I have a general great fond memory of Mike. You should see him right now. I don't know how many follow his career to see what he looks like, but the guy's addicted to working out, as opposed to me, <laughs> who obviously is enjoying his retirement. <laughs> oh. I swear, if, if I get invited back here next year, I will lose 30 pounds, I promise. <laughs> I'll start with my shoes. <laughs> Work from it. Um, I was wondering if you ever had to turn down any roles that you wished you hadn't because of all of your involvement with Stargate. I love you in Stargate, but. <laughs> but? <laughs> Do you regret turning anything down because of it? Oh, no, absolutely not. I was having too much fun, and the only reason I left the show when I did, which is two hours two hours, two uh, years before the show went off the air, or stopped making them, was um, that I had a situa domestic situation, a real life situation, where my uh, daughter was living in Los Angeles. Uh, her mother had taken her out of Vancouver, where um, I was shooting, into Los Angeles. And it just got to the point where I couldn't stand um, being away from her. And, and, I mean, God forbid that she should uh, grow up without the likes of me around. <laughs> but that was the case, and I didn't want that to happen. I wanted her to have some fun. Yeah. So I've been single dadding it ever since, and um, I never made a better choice in my life. Although, for Wiley's sake, uh, I wish she had more stability um, in the situation, but um, yeah, she, uh, she'll get over it. <laughs> After a ton of therapy and things like that. No, she's good. I don't regret giving up anything. I don't regret leaving the show. Um, but, yeah, I, and now I just, I obviously I'm just enjoying, you know, I do a bunch of work for the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society and, and uh, part of the brain in Los Angeles. 
river keepers. But uh, so that's how I'm kind of and hanging out with my dogs, which is yeah, dogs. I love my pups, but no, no jobs that uh, I turned down during that time. I'd like to say they they offered me the Indiana Jones franchise. But that was some other guy with a mustache. <laughs> That's all I got. Oh, we have another cute one. <laughs> what was it like being in Stargate? <laughs> no, I, uh, the whole experience was spectacular. I couldn't, I mean, there were times, of course, when things get a little rough and scripts are a little off or, you know, people are late. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, it was a great experience. You can imagine. I mean, if you watch the show, you can see that there was a, a wonderful rapport um, amongst the three of us, and Teal. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, um, it was, was the second best job I've had in my life, let's put it that way. Because I did one before that that you weren't even the dream of when I was making. That was an improperly structured sentence. <laughs> um, it was a great experience, but if you watch the relationship, you could see how much fun we were having, even when it was a serious subject. Um, what else? Anything else you want to know besides what was it like? <laughs> sure. I'm 6'2". <laughs> I used to weigh 195 pounds. <laughs> I hear some very pointed and distinct laughter from the back. Someone must be in the know. Anybody else? No? Okay. Hello, and um, I'd like to thank you for your role in MacGyver. And, uh... <laughs> Losing my hearing <laughs> and my sight and my faculties. Uh, well, there's duct tape, there's that and duct tape, but uh, I think you're talking about what did I make? Oh, I know! It just came to me. I, I, I had forgotten what show you were talking about. <laughs> um, there was an episode where I had to go, go figure. MacGyver had to go save somebody that was trapped. We really broke some wind. We, uh, I had to go up in the mountains and there were some terrorists that had uh, trapped this guy. And uh, I had to go up and uh, break him up. Now, he was in a kind of a jungle-esque 
place, so it, there was a lot of bamboo around, conveniently. <laughs> and uh, so I broke into this thing, and I, well, I found him, and then I broke into this shed that the bad guys had, that had all the makings for a hang glider. No, not a, not a hang glider, what? An ultralight that weighed about a ton and a half. <laughs> In fact, um, do you know the, uh, what's a show on Discovery? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mythbusters. Love that show. Love those guys. Met them and they're just, well, they're geniuses is what they are. But um, they did a, a, a busting of us on that show. We, they tried making the exact same ultralight that we had made on the show. They, they replicated everything they could. And uh, I think they used the same gauge bamboo that we used for the structure, did it? Yeah. Which made it impossible to get it off the ground. <laughs> let alone do anything off a cliff that was the runway, but do this. <laughs> and that's what it did. <laughs> but so consequently, watching that, we, and we shot it, and of course we did some editorial things to it to make it seem as though it disappeared off the cliff and then all of a sudden comes up on the others down the road a piece. But um, that was the movie magic. The Ghostbuster guys. Ghostbuster. <laughs> yeah, the Ghostbuster guys. I meant to say it. <laughs> Mythbuster guys um, proved that it's impossible. But that was my, so that was my favorite, because it was a total failure. <laughs> Off screen. Go ahead, right here. Hi, uh, I was just uh, wondering if uh, you and Kurt Russell ever met, and you're clearly the better uh, Jeff O'Neill, but I just wondered if you <laughs> That's so much. Really. Remember his? It's, he smoked and had a, a lighter that he gave to Alex, what's it? Scar. Thank you. <laughs> Stay close. Um, yeah, I've met um, him several times. We used to live in the same general area, and um, he and Goldie would take their dogs and run up uh, an area near where I lived at the time. And we'd cross paths, and I had Australian Shepherds, and uh, they had a huge, um, oh, say you take a tricolor Australian Shepherd, tricolor now, remember, black, white, little brown, and you blow it up. St. Bernard. Not a St. Bernard, no. One at a time, come on. Is that Dave? Bernie's mom, though, thank you. Very well done. Um, our next question is worth 20 points. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, that's, you know, I made, I said, hey, nice dog. And he stopped and I got to pet it. Then I pet the dog. <laughs> and Goldie. And I had a good time that day. But it was a dry heat. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> Anybody know how old he is, Kurt Russell? Is he? Young, well, everyone's younger than I am. <laughs> younger than I, actually, I should say. Um, where was I? There I was, 40,000 feet. No, oh, he's, a, he's a good guy. Of that. It's the heat. Um, <laughs> he 
want to get there. You see yourself? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, between watching MacGyver, I grew up watching MacGyver, and my dad's running commentary on the show, I grew up with the belief that I could fix anything. And about a month or two ago, I was fixing one of my Xbox remotes that my dogs ate, right? Dogs and Xbox remotes. My 16-year-old son sent me a text message, what are you doing? I said, I'm MacGyvering the Xbox remote. And he said, great, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Clearly, I failed as a mother, but my question is, what were you I was going to say. <laughs> but you're younger than I am, too. So. What words of advice? MacGyver, words of advice, seven brides, Stargate advice do you have for our kids today? Or else they wonder what they do. MacGyver words? Yeah, well, you use the English language like everyone else. Come on. Um, I'm not sure what that, if that's more profound a question than I would make the answer <laughs> sound. Roll back that tape and straighten that sentence out, will you? <laughs> Whew. Um, well, uh, all I can do is just kind of reiterate what the concept was all about. And it came down, I keep shortening it uh, the more I refer to it. But it was, there was nothing really unique about um, the character's approach to anything to any um, problem solving. It was all a matter of common sense and um, observing, listening, watching, sensing in any way you can things around you that may allow you to add somehow either to the solution to a problem or the cultural upheaval of the Mayan <laughs> society. <laughs> And stuff. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So I, to the kids today, I say, follow that advice. <laughs> oh, sometimes I just tickle myself. It's, just, it's so disjointed in here. Well, you know what, the, um, the 
I've lost track of so much, not the least of which is virtually every single episode of MacGyver. <laughs> but, and I don't mean that to cast an aspersion on anything, mind you, uh, it was the greatest time of my life on camera, that is. And, but I remember doing the, the fact that I was shooting a pilot for something, and I had, just before auditioning for a, for uh, the show, I had, um, I was on the verge of just, like, taking off and, you know, I was just riding a motorcycle around and didn't, f you know, it wasn't, nothing was really happening. It, was, it wasn't coming my way and I wasn't impressing anyone. And so it was that, with that mindset and that kind of, uh, karmic reasoning floating around that when I got a call from my agent and he said, get over to Paramount, dude, you've got a reading in about uh, an hour. Now, where I was was north of Malibu, up the coast a little bit. I'm on my, at that time, I'm sorry to say, my Harley Davidson. And that particular model is a terrible model and ear, so, but anyway, it got me quite quickly to where I was going. So I, and I had a longish hair, and I walked in to the audition. Have you heard this before? Did I? No. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> I may have to hit this rest stop over here. Um, so I got, I got in, I get into, and I'm wearing, literally, no joke, wearing the brown bomber jacket that became iconic, apparently. <laughs> Um, and my hair, we didn't have to wear helmets back then, my hair was just, I looked like a dandelion. <laughs> and I, I did this, so I had this pathway. <laughs> it wasn't a happy look. But I walked in and um, was asked to do the reading and so it took it and I, I didn't have my glasses or I mean, I had them with me, I wasn't wearing them. So I asked, because I hadn't seen the script before, I asked if I could wear my glasses to do the, um, the audition. And as the story goes, Henry Winkler tells the story of how they all looked at each other in the office, and there were about 10 producers, writers, and the like, um, all sitting in there, and apparently they all looked at each other. And kind of quietly, because I couldn't see them, but they were <laughs> looking at each other and kind of their eyebrows were going up and their heads were slightly nodding before I'd even read. Because in the, in the, uh, what I found out later was that they had been looking for the type of character that I basically presented to them when I walked through the door. <laughs> Retrospect, if that was good or bad, but um, uh, but the point was that anyone who would be as selfless and non-ego strewn and didn't non-machismo to ask if he could wear a pair of like lame-ass reading glasses <laughs> during an audition was the kind of guy that they wanted to play their character, and that was you know not that I just read the hell out of it, too. <laughs> oh, no. They were very forgiving, but, um, thank God. So, uh, what was the question?
want to get that out there. Um, so let's see how we're at a Comic Con. Um, who is your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero? Yes. Besides <laughs> yourself. Name a few. Superhero. Jesus. 
Um, you know, if I was ever like taken by the Taliban, and <laughs> they would ask me questions. They would finally say, "Ah, oh, get rid of them." <laughs> Take this shattering anymore. Uh, so eight days of that, and then a day at least of second unit, where parts of the script that we didn't get, we shoot. So what is that? Eight, nine, and then there would be editing, which to me took forever, but um, which is rightful because uh, editing is so important, and especially in, in effects driven show, not that ours was driven by effects, but it certainly had a fair share. Um, so, all total, um, a few days, <laughs> give or take. No, I'd say close to a, a month of fine tuning and all that other, putting laying music in and voiceovers. It adds up and it does take quite a long time. So it's not just a, oh, well, let's watch Stargate tonight. I think that looked easy to make. <laughs> Did that even come close to answering the question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an example for our children. <laughs> and after that answer, she does this. I'm sorry. Your, par your parents will explain what the problem is. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for being here. I know we all appreciate it very much. My pleasure. I've only known you from the MacGyver franchise prior from my parents, but then last year my boyfriend introduced me to Stargate. And every night since, we've had dinner with you and Stargate. And it's been really great, so I just want to say thank you for that. That is it's so, kind of so good sad. <laughs> well, we are at Comic-Con, so yeah, that's how we breed. We watch shows. And then, you know, nice. Yeah. But, uh, you say breed? Yeah. was, I noticed on Stargate that everyone had their own special power. Sam had science, Tilk had his old alien thing, and, you know, every other character had their own special power. But you, unfortunately, got the short end of the stick. And, um, didn't really have any special powers. But, I was curious, in real life, if you had a special power, what would it be and why? I mean, what would it be? <laughs> like a superpower. Um, I can hold my breath for 20 seconds. <laughs> or I used to be able to do that. I, I don't know. Like, what? How about invisibility? Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> uh, who wouldn't? Come on. Yeah. How about flying? Yeah. Okay. I'd love to do that. Super strength? Like I need it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, Rito. Don't get greedy. Thank you again. You bet. Thank you. Harkening back to your days as a post, uh, heart, teen heart, heartthrob on General Hospital. <laughs> and your crazy ex-wife who tried to kill half of Park Charles. Did that subsequently lead you to take characters that didn't have permanent Romantic attachments. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> had a steady girlfriend until towards the end, and O'Neill didn't have, he had an ex wife, but. <laughs> Well, you know they're television shows. Right? 
just so we get that point. Um, but no is the answer to your question. I, no, I didn't take jobs or turn down jobs contingent on what the character's love life was like. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, unless the co-star was, no, I don't know. Uh, no, it, that had <laughs> no effect on anything, to be honest. But yeah, it is rather cute. Curious that, uh, well, you know what? I think the inf inf inference from Pete Thornton was that MacGyver was kind of a dude, you know, like he would all this, this eyebrow raising that he could do so well. Um, and I'm not sure what the impression was about MacGyver's love life on Stargate, except that everybody wanted Jack and Sam to get together. Thank you. Uh, not the least of which people that uh, was me. You know, you know, some people have a way with words, and some people not have way. That's pretty much what happened just there. Um, but only in uh, parallel universe fantasy land did uh, um, I almost said Mac and Sam. Jack and Sam. <laughs> See what you've done to me. <laughs> Got to make out, and that was in uh, my wildest dreams. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Married woman. Acting. You look like perplexed. <laughs> Surgery. I broke 
two fingers on this hand, I sliced open. <laughs> Obviously something got sliced. <laughs> Do it yourself. Um, I've, I've uh, sliced open my one of my fingers playing with a uh, Swiss Army knife. There I go again. <laughs> Just kind of chopping at a back seat of a Cadillac. There was an episode where I had to do that, so between takes I was doing this. And it's not a fixed blade. It folded over on my finger, and for some reason we kept them really sharp. I don't know why. But um, so I had to you know, have that sewn back on. Um, I've had, uh, oh God, so much. One, but one in particular, I got shot in uh, my ankles. Plural. How do you do that with a, um, a pellet gun? Basically, it was a it, it was a gun that shot um, uh, pellets of some kind that would spark. They're spark hits, is what they're called. But they're they're made out of like a graphite something combo. If any any effects guys in here can clarify that. But I was supposed to. Uh, Run, getting shot at, and um, and then jump in the back seat of this car. Maybe it was the front seat. I don't know. But um, I did everything I was supposed to do. But the the effects guy is literally shooting a rifle that's that's loaded with these pellets, and they're not jelly beans. You know, they're not gooey. They're hard as like what they are rocks, basically. So he's um, sparking right behind me as I, I'm running across this um, tarmac, and and I jump into the window and I clear everything about the the window. It's not an easy thing to do, by the way. Try it sometime, all of you, especially you kids. <laughs> so I get in, and my feet, um, and it's my own fault because I told this effects guy, when in doubt, to make it look good make it close. So he made it so close that he perforated my one of my ankles and caused uh, the other one to break into like a, a smattering of blood stain. Like, you know, if you throw a bunch of rocks on something, somebody. <laughs> well, you kids. Um, that little spackles of blood will show up. Well, that's kind of what happened. It's really not such a good story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there any chance that you're going to do another Stargate movie? Because we'd love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the plans are. Seriously, I, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing something because at this point in time they would uh, have more money to, uh, or uh, Brad, um, Wright would demand more money to do the show. We had standing sets, we were ready to do a series of movies, um, Stargate movies, but MGM was just, you know, not interested. The bottom line is they wanted to make money, 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 and we wanted to spend money, money, money. It's the age-old conflict, but um, I don't know that there are any plans to do one. I've been approached by some foolish people to do a MacGyver um, thing, and I've said I've said uh, that I would only consider doing um, uh, kind of a one-off about MacGyver if they would buy into the fact that he's old and gray, he's out of shape. And he's losing his balance a lot more these days. <laughs> that, to me, um, of course, the only people that would really get it would be the original audience of MacGyver. Otherwise, they're just looking at some old fart trying to act. <laughs> but the joke would be, you know, isn't that cute? He's anyway. So I would consider doing that if they would um, meet my demands. <laughs> So we are at the uh, five minute mark. We have time for one more question. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe.
Uh, I'm sorry. For one, I feel like I'm in the, in the presence of God. Right? Stop it! <laughs> uh, but is it okay to call you Rick? Yes, right. you're supposed to. Rick, uh, so many fans since the get-go have wanted to see, uh, you know, Colonel and Colonel O'Neill and uh, Major Smith and Carter get together for the longest time, and we never got it. Um, like, how did, did did you ever get pressure from a lot of fans about that subject in the show? Yeah, all the time. I mean, like, like every single second of the year, like, <laughs> the day. We found over a course of time that we have the horniest audience. <laughs> Man. They just wanted us to get it on. And uh, the only reason we didn't is because we were um, being respectful to the Air Force and their rules of engagement. <laughs> it's just on engagement. Um, so we didn't, uh, we didn't go you know, you know, there are things like tailgate happening and all this, the abuse that was taking place back then and now. God, but um, so no, uh, I understand the uh, the desire. <laughs> Truly, I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just wasn't in the scripts. Um, um, if, if, um, you know. In your defense, you know, uh, that new flash series is going to be on CW, so it's probably not going to last very long. <laughs> yeah. The new what? Uh, the new, that new flash series they were talking about is on the CW. It's not going to last long. <laughs> <laughs> it's the camera on that? <laughs> That's terror. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have a good day, Mr. Burke. You too. You still got three minutes and 26 seconds. You thought you were going to get out of here early, didn't you? That's a good question. All right. Um, I'll make it quick and snappy. Um, in MacGyver, did you improve on your MacGyver's end, or were they planned by people who I don't know, scientists. It was it was a uh, it was a team effort actually. The the writers would do their research, and we had a, a consultant who um, worked for the labs at Caltech, I believe, um, and he was a real smart guy. So we would come up, the writers would come up with ideas and things to do and fantastical solutions. And then we'd run it by this guy and say, uh, sometimes, is this possible? Could we do this? And then, or say, what would it take to make this work um, the way we wanted to? Or got any ideas for us? It kind of went that way. So it was, uh, and that brings up the point of credibility. We always like to back up um, the incredible things that we, or uncredible things that we would do, and um, make sure that we, first of all, left out any possibility of kids blowing things up by le leaving out an ingredient or two. Um, so that, although some German kids back then found a way, <laughs> and they blamed my guy. So, um, uh, but no, it was a collaborative effort, the whole thing to, you know, if I got on set and what had been on paper just wasn't working, it wasn't, you know, just wasn't, there was no way to do it physically or, you know, spiritually. <laughs> Raise umbrage. I'm taking English lessons. <laughs> Wait, we all work together. 59, 58. Quick! Yes, young man. Oh, my question is um, do 
you remember that episode when you, um, hmm? Colonel Neal kissed Sam, kissed Sam Carter? What? <laughs> really? So did Amanda. I knew that was first. Yeah, but yes, I, I do remember it quite well. You know, you'll learn this in the future, but when you get your biggest laugh of the night, you quit. <laughs> Say thank you and good night.